operators in Perl. Now, Perl also has very rich operators, which is very much similar to uh, C or C++. There are some minor differences. What are they? Operators are specific symbols which have some predefined operations to perform on their arguments. So operations option to get the online help or Perl operators is Perl OP. So if you do option to get the online help or Perl OP, I think it is there in Perl doc. Let's see. Perl doc. Perl OP. If you do this in the if you just do Perl op, if you do just Perl doc and specific uh, followed by the keyword, it is there in previous slides. It will give you all the uh, information. So what is an operator? So Perl is very rich in documentation. You all the information is there in um, Perl, and you can see in this line wherein they say that operators borrowed from C keep the same precedence relationship with each other, even where C's precedence is slightly screwy. This makes learning Perl easier for C folks. So people who have uh, knowledge of C, they can easily understand Perl because it is just like very easier implementation of C. So that's that's how it is. So uh, you can just whatever they are asking, like Perl op or whatever uh, Perl operators or Perl whatever you can just do Perl doc specified by the keyword, and you can see the specific uh, meaning like um, of Perl operators or what are the Perl operators. These operators can be divided into four uh, different types, like arithmetic operators, assignment operators, logical operators, bitwise operators, range operator, repetitive operator, concatenation operator, miscellaneous operator, quoting operator. So what are they? So arithmetic operator is very much similar. We are already aware of what are the arithmetic operators like addition, subtraction. Uh, this is this is called uh, modulo operator. Like if you want to get the reminder, reminder of if you divide say uh, three divided by two, so you get what you or you get say five divided by three, so you get what you get um, uh, you get two as the remainder. So the remainder can be stored in um, the modulo op operator value, but the divider uh, the division is like what is the value of the after division? If we divide Five by three. What is the what is the value of the division? But modulo is the remainder. So yeah, we are already aware of this operators, and then we have this multiplier, uh, multiplication uh, thing, and we have double star. We'll go, we'll go through this later. What is the meaning of double star? Just you understand these are the operators. Later we'll come to know about this kind of operators. So in assignment operators, we have equal equal to um, uh, no, we have equal to plus equal to minus equal to star uh, equal to that multiplication into equal to division equal to and module equal to. So it is same like if you have equal to we have we can just assign, but we can have plus equal to means a plus equal to three means what you want to assign it, you want to add it and um, and then uh, you want to assign it. So it is something like in one line. Instead of doing a is equal to two and a plus plus, so we are doing a plus equal to two. Means what? Whatever the value is there, I am incrementing the value of a by two. So this is what uh, is uh, the meaning of pl plus equal to. It is very much similar in C C plus plus. Also, we have this kind of concepts. So minus equal uh, minus equal to into uh, the, uh, multiplication equal to similar kind of thing. And in Perl. Instead of having greater than symbols, uh, less than symbols, uh, as we have in other op, uh, other uh, programming languages, Perl has differences between how do we use greater than or less than. It can be greater than or less than only for numbers. So if we are only operating on numbers like one and two, and uh, or the value of these uh, scalars is numbers, then we can. Um, Use this uh, the, uh, operators which are similar to any programming language. But if we are working on strings, say we are working on two strings, then we must use this LT that less than greater than greater than greater than equal to less than equal to equal to not equal to for strings. This you must remember. That's how Perl is different. If you want to learn Perl, 
you must be very much hands on with Perl. So you must go and read all the concepts of Perl because there are so much pattern matching, uh, pat, uh, substitution, uh, regular expression, so much special variables in Perl and so much uh, like extra keywords that I basically started from a C background and then I Perl. I found that part as little complex, but as and when I learned more Perl, I found it is very easy. But the thing is, once you move from C to Perl, you find the Perl code very easy. But this extra operators and this extra things you must learn. Otherwise, you cannot write a C code uh, like Perl. So you cannot uh, you cannot use the power of Perl. So you have so much additional keywords which you must use. So that is the most important thing of Perl, that if you want to learn Perl, you must understand each and everything and all the keywords and all the syntax you must know very clearly, which is different from C or C++. So you, if you have some programming background, you must, uh, you, uh, you must have read about C or C++ or you must have worked on that. Okay, just read the additional things, uh, how C is different from Perl. So, uh, so th that's how you must go. So you must have, uh, you must learn how Perl is different from C, how Perl is different from other languages, and then you try to find out what are the things. Then you will come to know what are the advantages of Perl and how you can write millions of lines of code into lakhs of lines of code or hundreds of lines in code into some tens or tens, uh, ten, fifteen lines of code. That is the good thing. You can use just the inbuilt. Uh, regular expressions or keywords, and you can do a lot of things in Perl. On a single uh, on, on a single command line, you can do everything on Perl, which you cannot do on C. You must write a program in C, but in Perl you can do on command line. So that is the good thing about Perl, but it's complex also because people have to learn a lot of things on Perl, which is not the case in C, where if you know the C keywords, which are not as much as Perl, and you know logic, you can implement any logic. But Perl other than logic, you must know the keywords and what to use when. So there are a lot of keywords and a lot of things you will come to know as and then you learn this in a proper fashion, in a systematic fashion. So I must tell that you must go through any, you must have some previous programming knowledge or if you don't have, just try to read what a C does. You can start with C and understand what are loops, what are, what are the things. I think most of the people are aware of this. And then you go to the Perl and understand what are, how it is different. So first you develop the logic and what are the uh, inbuilt things in a programming language like uh, which, which are part of the programming language and then you understand how Perl is different. Then you can clearly understand uh, how Perl works and how we, we can make the codes very small and the code size is actually very small in Perl because the lines of code are very, very less. And we have, can have the bitwise operators that and or x or uh, left shift right shift so if you are in, good in c or c plus plus you must know these operators so this is like bitwise operators you work on the bits if you do a bitwise operator of and it will just and the bit and the bit means if it is one and one it is one and if it is one and zero it is zero but if it is or if it is one and one it is one but it is zero and one it is also one because, but only 0 and 0 is 0. So it, you must know logic, uh, mathematical logic or uh, logic circuits, uh, logic design, of how bitwise operators works. So X or what is this, exclusive or, so what is this, if 1 or 1, it becomes 0. So, and left shift, you can shift the bits left by number, uh, how much, or right shift by how much, so you can do that. Range operator, you can specify a range, a range of something. So, but we'll we'll uh, go through the next slides and we'll understand how it is done because this is very vast. Once you see the example, you will come to understand uh, how it is done. And the repetitive operator is uh, like uh, uh, you want to repeat a uh, thing n number of times, five times. So you can just print and x five. You can just do print x five. So it will print five times. So it is very simple. Uh, you can just uh, uh, write a small code and you can just print and how many times you want to print that you uh, you can just specify that and uh, you can specify after x what you want to uh, how many times you want to print so it will print a number of times 
and concatenation operator is like if you want to concatenate uh, two expressions or uh, like if you want to print and you want to concatenate you can do that as and when we go through the examples we will take this it is more like for your reference not just for programming because I, I have taken the basics of Perl how to execute, uh, execute Perl and what are the basic operators so this is more like a study class where you are understanding with the introduction of Perl once you know and you read all those things probably tomorrow or next week we will be going in the advanced concepts then probably you will be asking more advanced questions which you will be understanding how it is done so and we'll be having more examples and there are a lot of scripts in the end if you see uh, that LMS if you see uh, there are uh, also scripts at the end so you have uh, presentation and you also have uh, scripts so module 1 scripts are there and then module 1 assignments are there so I expect after each module uh, the presentation is done and all you take over the quiz and uh, answer the questions and the, the scripts are there which uh, all the scripts w which are there in module 1 what are covered is there then the assignments are there so in, you need to practice it is for your own good it is not something like uh, <laughs> it's an exam and then there is an assignment solution so rather than a, a, uh, directly going through the solution you can just do your own and then match that thing so that is the good thing about uh, this uh, entire exercise so that you are completely hands on everything is there in this session o almost everything is there you don't need to even refer anything else you will come to know about everything through this okay so let's go to the next slide so uh, so then we have uh, miscellaneous operators plus plus minus minus so we can do a, 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 a uh, like a plus plus a minus minus so basically plus plus is like in post increment pre increment and uh, like we can do equal to um, we can do equal to and tilde and not and tilde so what are the uses of this you will come to know later you just go through this now okay we'll we'll go when we cover regular expressions and all and then you can understand these are used where it is used in pattern matching and all okay and then quoting operator q double q q w like q w is for if you want to specify a path in uh, initially and then q x so these all things you go through this rather than being very subjective you just go through this understand this as and when we go further we'll move further on this okay so operators in Perl so um, in Perl the operator determines what operations is performed and on which arguments for example dollar $A plus dollar $B is always a numeric addition okay if dollar $A or dollar $B do not contain numbers the interpreter converts them to numbers first and then operation is performed okay so what is the thing we'll, we'll understand slowly similarly if we are doing some scalar operation on date uh, list data type so scalar operation means it's, we are considering that a scalar on this data type means hash, hash or array Perl first tries to convert the list into scalar this is called a context so what it means is when we want to do an addition and multiplication or this so, uh, or whatever we want to do or uh, any operations the interpreter must, must understand what is on the left hand side of the operator and what is on the right hand side of the operator if these are not matching or these are not compatible Perl will first come make it compatible and then do the operation so if A and B do not contain numbers interpreter converts them to number first and then operation is performed because this plus operator as I said is used only it is a, uh, a, a, a numeric but if you are uh, if you want to use this um, the, uh, these operators arithmetic, this are arithmetic operators only for numeric but if you want to use some on string then you can use LT greater than and all so for string but if you want to this use greater than equal to and all it is only for numbers so this logic must go on as which is uh, de uh, defined internally by Perl that uh, if it is the arithmetic operator is only for arithmetic you must have arithmetic uh, um, uh, expressions on both the sides on the left hand side and the right hand side similarly if they don't contain numbers uh, it has to be converted in number first or some scalar operation or list type 
Perl tries to convert into scalars. How it is done? Similar thing. If you do Perl minus A, dollar A is equal to 10 dollar B, 20 print dollar A plus dollar B. So see, here it is simple. Here it is dollar A equal to 10 and dollar B equal to 20. So if we just add print dollar A as I gave in the previous example, you can just do like this and this is for uh, this is for if you want to write on a code, notepad or something as some editor and then run. But if you want to do it on command line, you don't need to use my and all. You can directly uh, put these values as specified here. So you can just do dollar a equal to 10 and you can see that semicolon says that it is next line. So as Rahul or someone asked me that whether the semicolon is important. This is because, see, if you are actually writing a Perl script like here. You are not writing uh, a, a single line. See, it has three lines. A dollar equal to 10, dollar B equal to 20, and then dollar A equal to dollar B. And here we don't need the semicolon. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. I think the last line, the semicolon may not be important because we don't, that is the end of the statement. But before that, all the statements must be uh, segregated by a semicolon because then only it goes to the next statement and in the command line if we are segregating with the semi semicolon it means each is a single statement so here also you can see dollar a equal to 10 dollar b 20 and then dollar a dollar b here what is the thing is we are putting this as a string we are putting dollar 10 as string and dollar b also as a string and what it does is since it's arithmetic operation it will convert both into integers and then it will do that operation. So we will not call it integers in uh, Perl. We will just say that, uh, say that it is uh, uh, like scalar, uh, a sc a scalar with the integer data type. You can say. And in the third case, dollar a equal to ten, dollar b equal to twenty, print dollar a. So you get zero. The reason being, we don't know what is the value, of what is ten and dollar twenty. This is just a string. So if we had a hash and we did ten equal to ten and 20 equal to 20 and then we tried to uh, add the elements of the hash it could have printed to the right value so that is why here it is uh, 0 so I'll go to the next slide um, so we, we have like dollar a equal to 1, uh, 1 plus 2 dollar a equal to 3, 3 minus 4 dollar a equal to 5 so we can have this kind of thing whatever are the operators you have seen you can do this operators if it is a binary operator or a unitary operator, so there are something called binary operators, where you, which is which needs two expressions, left hand side and right hand side, and you have unitary operators like plus plus, post increment, pre increment. These are unitary operators. This needs just one uh, one expression. It doesn't need two expressions. So you can do this. You can increment it, uh, uh, yeah, post or pre. Pre means uh, like before uh, you want to assign something. And so you assign it and then increment it. But um, but if you want to increment it, uh, if you want to assign something and uh, post increment, what it does is, if you want to assign something, so what it does is it will uh, assign some value, but the incrementing is done in next line. But pre-increment is if you are assigning something to something, and the incrementing is also done in the same line, it will first do everything together, it will increment and it will go to the next line. So. Uh, so this is post uh, pre-increment, post-increment, and again we can have this concatenation. As I said, if you want to just concatenate two strings, it is only for strings. As I, as I said, so you can concatenate two strings with dot operator. So it will just do Eureka Perl, and if you do Eureka X2, <coughs> excuse me. So it will be just Eureka printed twice. And if you do dollar a uh, dollar a dot Perl, if you do, then what it means is concatenate and assign works for other operators. So means what? So I I uh, concatenate and assign. So I uh, I, I uh, concatenate Perl and into a, and then I assign it also. So uh, it is it is like doing two things at the same time. So uh, whatever the value of a was, I concatenated Perl. And I also assigned that uh, thing, so it makes two, two as a sing single entity. And we can have dollar a equal to one. This is called ternary operator. If you are knowing C, C plus plus, so this is called ternary operator. So if the first expression is true, of uh, true, it will give the this value. If it is false, it will go the uh, the second value. So if if one is tr true, then it gives true. 
or if 1 is not true, if the output is not 1, so if the value of A is 1, it will give true. If the value is not 1, it will give false. It can also, you can also say if 1 a question mark here also you can run 1 or 0. So it depends on your logic what you want the output to be. So you can instead of writing two lines or three lines of code, you can write in a single line. Okay, and you can also have this. Okay, so if and this two. So this means yeah, means greater than equal to greater than less than. So this sign means greater than minus 1 if LHS is less than RHS, 0 if LHS is equal to RHS and 1 if LHS is greater than RHS. Okay, so dollar equal to, it should be 64. I think there is a typo. Okay, so uh, what you want to do? Dollar day is equal to eight double star 64. I think there is a typo. Where is that? Uh, e to the power of 2. Oh yeah, so yeah, that is, I think that is a typo error. That is a power, 8 to the power of 2. So this is, you are right. You are right Rahul. Yes, I am sorry about it. The slide has a mistake. So it is like power. So if you do this power, it is like 8 square. So 8 square is 64. So you are right. It is a typo. We will try to rectify this. Okay, so probably I'm not sure if we can rectify this in this session only but this batch only but you have to get this rectified this is an error you can probably uh, raise a ticket and get this rectified that this slide has an error you can just mention or otherwise it's for your reference you can understand it's an exponential okay so I'll go to the uh, okay this this also the last one is a special operator in Perl wherein if it is LH is equal to RHS then only it will return one and uh, if LH is less than RHS, it will give minus 1. And again, um, uh, sorry, if it is 0, it is LH is equal to RHS. And if 1, if LH is greater than RHS. So it is something like it is minus 1, 0, and 1. It will have three values. If both are equal, then it will give 0. If it is left is greater than right, it will give 1. And if left is less than right, it will give minus 1. So you can practice and understand. Later we will we'll come to know when we see more examples. Okay, so operator, operator precedence and associativity. So, so operator precedence and associativity. So we will have, uh, so uh, like any other op language, Perl also have the operator precedence. Operator precedence says that some operators are evaluated by the interpreter before others. For example, 4 plus 4 into 5. The multiplication has higher precedence, so 4 into 5 is evaluated. It is similar to uh, how expression is evaluated in any programming language, where it will give precedence to uh, higher precedence operators. It is very much similar to C. If you know a little bit of C, you will understand uh, that precedence. So you have to go through operator, operator precedence. If you go through the Perl doc operator, there you will see the precedence. And you can understand that how precedence is done. It is very much similar to C, so first it will take multiplication and addition, even if you don't put in braces or something. Associativity. Operator associativity says what happens when the same operator is used one after the other, whether the evaluator will evaluate the left operations first or the right one. Okay, so associativity is like you want to say that which will be evaluated first. The, if you are having an expression, uh, just now I had this expression where I have this ternary operator, okay. So we have something on, uh, we have some value and this is the left uh, one value and the other value. So this, these are like, there are multiple uh, uh, solu uh, uh, results for this. So the thing is how the evaluation is done. So uh, precedence is who will take the precedence. This is fine, but associated is from left to right or light, right to left. So this is one simple example where the associativity is done. So this is from left to right for ternary operator. It is not from right to left. So it will not first assign false and then true. It will first take true and false. So it is left to right. Some of the operators will have right to left as well. So we'll, uh, you can go through and understand. So these are very much similar to C. Okay. So for example, 8 minus 4 minus 2 subtraction is left associative. So Perl evaluates left to right. So 8 minus 4 is evaluated first and 4 minus 2, not 8 minus 2 
six. So this is very simple. It is like it is generally all the associativity is from left to right, rather than from being right right to left. Okay. Then operator precedence and associativity reference. So we have non-associativity um, and uh, associativity and operators. So non-associativity uh, which which doesn't have that associativity is plus plus minus minus, and uh, that rise associativity is star star. And again, this you can just learn it. So no associativity means we cannot have this association for this kind of thing. If there are uh, combination of operators, we cannot have non-associative. But generally, if this kind of expressions are there, it will be either left to right or right to left. Most of the thing, it is uh, left to right. But mostly for urinary operators, where only it requires one uh, expression, so it will be right to left. So you can see here. I'll go to the next slide. So what is the output of three star star two star to star two? So it is what it is like. You you can you can uh, as Rahul said, it is very simple. So uh, it is like we are doing three exponential two and two. So it is very simple mathematics. So three into three is a nine, and uh, nine nine is eighty one. I think the answer should be eighty one. Yeah. So uh, so eighty one has rise associativity. So the expression evaluated is three star star. To start to, so it is always good if you want to learn that you have to put the right brackets to understand. Though Perl will do it itself, but if you put this yourself, you will clearly understand what is happening because that is how it is. It is from uh, like right to left or right, uh, left to right. You can understand because this is unary operator. This is unary operator, so it is right to left. So that's why I put the brackets on the right. If it was uh, left associative some uh, binary operator, so we could have put the bracket here and here between this and this. So that's how it is left or right. You can understand. Then what is the output of the following statements? Print plus plus foo equal to 99, foo is equal to a0. So, so what it does is we want to print plus plus. Okay, we want to print and the value of it is pre-increment. Okay, we want to increment it. Before only, so the value of foo is 99. So we make it 100, and again uh, we have the a0 p increment. So it will be, uh, I think it will be a1 and foo a z plus plus. I, I, we have to see this. Not, uh, I have, I'm little. I have some doubt. So it is like 9900 a0 a1. So okay, again a z becomes b a. So you can understand how it is done. So Yeah, so it is hundred. So it is incremented. A zero becomes A one, and A Z. Okay. If the character ends, if the character ends, it will restart from the first character. This is another good thing about Perl because it has so many things. It is sometimes sometimes even if you are a very good programmer on Perl, you might tend to forget few things because these are. Not you. You don't use it very often, but this is something which is Perl has this feature. That's why it, that's why I told like Perl is so rich and powerful. So it has so much features. So you can see that after Z has completed, uh, Z is the last letter. It increments to Z to again A. So this is something for only for characters, and this is very strange. But that's how Perl works. Now we'll go to the next slide. So so grab the input from the user. So this uh, this operator where the, where it is angular braces open and close or diamond operator used to grab the input from standard input that is called STDIN. So uh, it is very much similar to uh, when you say that uh, uh, scanf. Okay. So when you want to uh, ask any user that what is your name, so pr uh, please type your name. So you will print. Uh, you will just type, and you will uh, that it will interpret what is the what is the thing. You can print that value. So it is very much similar to scanf, wherein if I want to do print, what's your name? It will be printed on the screen, and it is asking the user for the intervention. What is the <coughs> excuse me? What is the value of uh, the name you want to print? So you will just print. Uh, you will just type something. So it will say if you want to print and dollar name. So see, you can say. Uh, well, uh, hello, welcome to Perl Training, Mr. Name. So what we are, we are, we want to print. Hello, welcome to Perl Training, Mr. Dot Name. So dot is the concatenation and dot name. 
So whatever is your names there, Rahul or Mahesh or Dimitri or what, whoever is there, <coughs> excuse me, it will just print the name. So that's how it, it works. So whenever we accept the input, we, we press enter key. Okay, so it is, uh, it is something where, similar to C, wherein if you want to type something in scanf, so you have to press the enter key. So every time slash n is appended to the input, remember to remove it when compared data with input. So this is one important thing wherein if you want to compare, okay, there are some uh, chomp and chop, there are some functions in Perl. So how, if we want to compare what is the output, we must remove this uh, slash n. And there are some functions like uh, chop, I guess, which append, uh, which will not have this slash n uh, appended, but chomp will have. So, so basically, as we go further, we'll understand like uh, how it does. So we must know that uh, uh, that uh, this uh, slash n is appended to the input for normal cases. So it's up to us to use the right function to uh, compare with the input. Say for example, Perl input module dot pl. What's your names? Question mark Sajan. So hello welcome to pearl training mr sajan so this is something which we already saw here so we'll go to the next slide and here we have something like context in pearl so what is context so context means how pearl interpreted and understands your code so we already covered this in the last slides where we already told if we want to add two numbers the context of this should be same or if you want to add uh, two hash elements so it should be brought in the right context. If they are not in the same context, they will not be able to, we cannot do any operations on them. So that's how the context is. So context means how Perl interpreter understands your code. In Perl, it comes into picture wherever you try to do things is unexpected by the interpreter. So again, this is something which I told, like uh, it comes to picture whenever you try to do things is unexpected by the interpreter. So, that's where the error comes, wherein we try to do something, we are expecting something and something else comes. Because the context is not right, we are not doing in the right context. Similarly, uh, for if you want to uh, uh, access a hash member or do something on the hash, so most of the times we will get an error because you don't know how the work working is done in hash. You will assign some, instead of uh, index, you assign some value. So the whole thing goes for a toss. So this is what you must understand that the context should be right and the Perl will, um, the interpreter must understand the context otherwise it will not be able to give you the right value. For example, convert array hash into scalar, assignment operator on strings, we have already covered this. We also see an example where we do arithmetic operation on string. In all these cases, context comes into picture. Okay, so again we do, uh, we have already covered this where we want to do arithmetic operator on string, uh, the context it will be converted from uh, string to integer and then we can do this thing. While performing the assignment in scalar, interpreter sets $B to the last item 6. So see, here, here the context comes as RHS is list and LHS is scalar. The left hand, our right hand side is list. It is a list which is having 3 values, while the left hand side is just having one value. So what will happen is while performing the assignment, it will interpreter sets $B to the last item that is 6. That is how, so that's how Perl inter, uh, does. Now if you want to compare B or something, it will only take the value as 6 instead of this. Because the reason being $B is a scalar. It can store only one value. It can either store 4, 5 or 6 or any single value. But if you want to put 3 values, it will put the last value which you put in the dollar p and then you can do any operations of dollar p so it will refer to 6. While performing assignment in a scalar context, interpreters, uh, interpreter set dollar p to the last item 6. Okay, we have already calculated, covered that. So dollar uh, array is equal to 4, 5, 6, dollar b equal to uh, at the rate array. Now what will happen? So we have an array which has 3 members, 4, 5, 6 and we have this dollar b, we are assigning a scalar to an array. Now what will happen? You are assigning a list to an uh, an array uh, list or array to a scalar. 
So what will happen here? Context comes uh, RHS is list and RHS is scalar. Sorry, it is again a typo. It is like LHS is uh, scalar and RHS is list. So while performing the assignment of scalar, interpreters sets to the total number of items. So what it will do is this is another important trick in Perl where you want to see the size um, uh, uh, or number of elements on in, in an array, you can just assign this to a scalar variable. There are multiple ways to do that. Uh, one way we have already already seen wherein we did the last index by that, uh, by putting that hash and uh, dollar I guess, hash, uh, uh, dollar and hash I guess, which we had covered in the last slides, which gives the last element. So it is, is similar to size wherein we can say it is just, um, it starts with 0 and n minus 1, so we can just add 1. So whatever we got. Here we what we can do is we can just assign and it will be the exact size. So if you want to know the size of an array, if it is a huge array, so if you just print, it will print you the size of an array. Okay, this is another way. There is one more way, a um, few more ways to do it as on when we go forward will tell you, but you need to know some advanced concepts what are uh, available in Perl and some special variables. So while performing the assignment in scalar context, interpreter sets this to the total number of items. Okay. Again, the third example. So we are doing dollar $a, dollar $b, dollar $c equal to 4, 5, 6. Here context doesn't come. As RHS is list, LHS is list. So simply dollar $a will be 4, B5, C will be 6. <coughs> So is, is simple because it doesn't need any conversion. So what is the output of the uh, following? So we will have uh, 4 plus 25, 10. So what will happen? So here <coughs> we are 104. When interpreter con converts list into scalar, it gets the last element. So as we uh, did here, we can see that we want to add a scalar with a list. So if you go to the previous slides, what we saw is you want to assign a list to a scalar. What will happen is it will give you the size. If it, it, it will give you the size, okay. So here what will happen is it will assign the last element, so which is 100. In fact, it is not uh, the size, it is not an array here. Here <coughs> we are not putting at the rate, instead we are actually putting we are just putting uh, this between the braces. So what happens is, we it will just take the last element because we want to add two numbers and the first element is a scalar, the second element is also scalar, so it will take the last scalar value that is 100. Okay, so that's how it works, 4 plus 100. So what is the uh, output of dollar $A is equal to 2500, print 4 plus A. So again what we do is, we assign uh, an array and we pass the values of 25, below, uh, 25 and 100. So array has two elements, 25 and 100. And print 4 plus array. Now what it will do, we have already covered that when we as, uh, want to assign an array to a scalar, it will take the size. So size is what? Size is 2. Because we have two elements in the array. So it will be 4 plus 2. That is 6. That we already covered. So this is that it gets the total number of elements and that's what is added to 4. Okay.